Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be all about the books that I finished in the month of April. So before I kick off all the stats, I have uh, one thing to say um, and that is welcome to all the new subscribers. Um, the day before that I am filming this, I have had a little flurry of new subscribers and I'm really sorry but I can't remember all your names but there is Claire, there is Amanda, um, there was Beth, uh, there was a few of you and I'm sorry that I can't remember all your names. I forgot to write them down before I started filming this. Um, and I just want to say thank you and welcome. I also want to say one big thank you to Steph over at Steph Loves because it's she's the reason why I have had this little flurry. Uh, we were on reading sprints for Final Book Support Group, which is her bi-monthly readathon that she runs um, to encourage us all to continue and finish the series that we all have in progress of which some of us have innumerable amounts um and while on sprints uh, someone asked for some advice on um managing youtube and working and i gave some a little bit of advice for new booktubers as well in the comments and then we got talking about small channels and staff very kindly invited those of us with channels to pop our links in the comments and from that is where we had um, the little flurry of new subscribers and I know I'm not the only one that benefited from that and I know that we are all extremely grateful to Steph for inviting us to do that. She's never had a problem with us saying that we have channels in the chat and I know that she is absolutely delighted that we have benefited from her doing that as well um, because she just wants all of us to be as successful um, and she knows that there's a space for everyone. So yes, very, very grateful to Steph for doing that. Um, it's um, It just gave me a little bit of a boost. I've not been feeling right this weekend. I've hurt my shoulder. Um, so the books I have to hold up, I might not be holding them up for very long. And I've been feeling a bit low. And yes, that has just brightened my weekend. So I'm really, absolutely, really grateful. And of course, you should definitely go and check out Steph, especially if you're like me and you have far more series in progress than you have waiting to be started. Um, because yeah, we, we need to get a move on. And like I say, she does these bi-monthly. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the current month, we're here to talk about April and what did I read. So let's go through some of my stats. So the first stat and the most important is number of books. I managed to finish 11 books. Now note, I say finish. This is because a couple of the books were carryovers from previous months um, and years uh, in one case. Um, so I always say this is just the number of books that I managed to finish and I only talk about the books that I finished. I managed to read um, and I had set myself a little challenge for the month of April. Everybody was do, seemed to be doing 30 books in 30 days. I knew there was absolutely no way that was going to happen for me. So I decided to go with 3,000 pages in 30 days, an average of 100 pages a day. Should be doable including when you're reading Chunky Fantasy. And it was, I managed to read 3,262 pages. So I beat my uh, target by 2,262 pages. So I'm really pleased with that. And uh, one thing I didn't say in my May TBR is that I'm going to try and keep that going. I've um, set up my story graph, um, goal to because uh, you can set an annual goal but you can also set um, other goals towards reading and I've set it up to read 700 pages a week so it does mean that yes when I get to the end of the week because because I've set it up to start on a Monday so it goes Monday to Sunday I do have to do some um, real work to catch up some weekends uh, if I don't manage to read the 100 pages a day in the week. So, but yes, it's worked out really, really well and I'm carrying that on for May. Did I listen to any audiobook time in the month of May, April? Yes, I did. I listened to just under two hours worth of audio and that was just to finish off one book. Now I did listen to a bit more um, than that, but it was an audiobook that I had started quite some time ago now, 
before I was using Storygraph, before I was and without um, logging it on uh, Goodreads at that time, I had picked up one of the Harry Potter books and I decided I wanted something to listen to, but I wasn't in the mood for music. I'd finished um, the the other audio book that I was listening to, so I just made my way through this one as well. Um, and that was the sixth book in the series. So I finally finished and I've marked that one off of my list, but it's a reread, so it doesn't count to any of my targets for books owned this year. Um, but it is a partial audiobook that is off the list. Book format I read four physical books, six ebooks, and listened to one audiobook. The genres that they covered there were seven romance books and four fantasy books. My average rating was 3.7. I read a total of six new to me authors and I read three authors that I've read from before. One of those authors I did read three books from, that's why it doesn't add up to 11 books. Five of the books that I read were ones that I owned. Um, I had one book from the library and five of the books came from Kindle Unlimited. So for books that were on my actual TBR that weren't from the library or weren't from Kindle Unlimited, the longest period of time that one had been on there, it was purchased in November 2016. Um, so seven and a half years it has been on my list. Um, and the shortest time uh, is one that was purchased at the beginning of this year. It was purchased in March this year, February, March this year. Um, and that was the shortest amount of time other than Library and Kindle Unlimited that a book had been on my TBR. I have earned myself some book money. So four of the five books that I owned are books that I had on my physical and virtual shelves at the start, very start of the year, so on 31st of December 2023. Um, so I've earned myself £4 for those and one of the books that I finished was a library book, so I have earned myself 50p for that one. So yes, sounds like quite a successful month. It was a very successful month. There were times where I felt it was very slow, um, but like I say, I had four fantasy books on there and they're all chunky. Um, so it did actually take me a little while to finish some of them. Um, but yeah, overall, that was a really good reading month and I'm really happy with all of those statistics. So let's talk about the books that I finished then, shall we? The first book that I finished this month was Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer. This was the second book, or is the second book, in her Fallen God series. Um, it is only a trilogy. I have said in an earlier video that I thought it may be longer than that, but no, um, Hannah Kainer has been saying on social media now that it is only three books in the series. I enjoyed this one. It's not the highest rated fantasy that I have ever read. Um, but I do enjoy my time in the books. I am not so taken with Kisson's story in this as I was in Godkiller. I actually am more intrigued now by Inara and Skeddy. Um, I'm not really otherwise engaged uh, with the other characters, but I think Inara has the most interesting plotline to follow, especially going into book three. I did get to the end of this book and I was kind of like, wow, I really want to read book three now. I wish I'd picked this up when it was a fully published series so that I didn't have to wait. Um, so it does give me that real sense of like needing to carry on with the series. But at the same time, it's not an absolute blow me away, you know, breathless all the way through type of fantasy. It is good solid fantasy. Um, there is a good amount of world building in both the books. Um, I feel like I have a good understanding of the world and how the magic system works um, and how the gods um, come about and can be killed off. All those various things that you need to know, I feel like they are explained extremely well. And Yes, I am looking forward to book three. It doesn't have a name yet. I know it is going through rounds of edits. Um, it doesn't have a name yet, but I'm looking forward to finding out what it will be. Um, and actually, I'm looking forward to seeing what else Hannah Kana can come up with 
once this series is done with and future works and I'd love to see her growth and progression as a fantasy writer. The second book that I finished this month was Dark Wolf Adrift by Amy Easterling. This is a prequel to um, a supernatural paranormal romance series and I felt a bit let down. I've been a bit hyped for this. When I purchased this one, I purchased the whole series and I don't actually want to go on and read the rest. Um, it is about a man who is, he's in um, American naval forces. I think he might be a Navy SEAL. He is a werewolf um, and he finds himself in a situation that makes him leave the forces. Um, and then he's taken in, he's a bit of a lone wolf, but he finds a pack who will take him in. Um, and it goes from there. And it was just, there was something about the flow of the story that just didn't work for me. Um, I felt like he was just lurching from one thing to another. And it was, there was no, there was no build up around uh, the world. Um, and they, the characters felt very two dimensional. And I just, it, there was just something lacking for me the whole way through. I pushed through because I wanted to complete it. Um, because I do have the rest of the books in the series. And I don't know that I'm going to read them. And it's too late to return them. I won't get my money back. back. I can delete them from my Kindle and get them off of my um, list. Uh, but... I don't know. I'm I'm a bit torn. Um, the writing might get better. I won't know without trying. Maybe, maybe in a future round of Final Book Support Group, I should dedicate myself to trying those series that I thought, mm, the first book wasn't great, but maybe, uh, maybe that's something I can think about for future. But no, this one was a definite miss for me. Um, and it, while it didn't make me slumpy, it did make me question some of my life choices when it came to purchasing books, especially back in 2016. After reading Dark Wolf Adrift, I needed a book that was going to solidly draw me back into reading. Uh, and I decided that I would pick up Sweet Regret by Kay Bromberg. Um, this isn't her most recent, or is it her most recent? I can't remember. I've fallen so far behind with her releases um, that I'm not up to date and I'm really sad about that. And it is one of my things that I'm trying to do because she is one of my all-time favourite romance authors. Sweet Regret um, picks up a side character from a side character's book from a series that she wrote quite a lot of years ago. Um, it is rock star romance and it is second chance romance and it is surprise you have a kid romance. And I thoroughly enjoyed it because Kay Bromberg just has this way of writing that even when you know the characters are doing the wrong thing, you're going along with them. Even though you're saying to yourself, you really just, just, just open, just open the mouth and let the words flow. And you know that, and then this one, the main character, Bristol, um, she had plenty of opportunities to tell Vince that they had had a child together. Um, but because she was being belligerent and stubborn and she would find reasons in the way Vince was behaving to not tell him. And it, I agree. There was one conversation that they had. I completely agree because... He had turned around and said, no, no kids, don't want kids. Um, and I completely get why in that situation she was like, I can't tell him. But every other time it was just sheer stubbornness instead of just finding the courage to say, hey, look, this happened. Um, and Vince is convinced that he is, you know, not a great person when actually he's just troubled and has trauma and needs to to kind of like get a bit of help and some therapy and you get to the whole big reveal and just the way the way the two of them act in that moment I just my heart was in my mouth for them both and as always Kay Bromberg just pulls everything out of the bag and you cannot help but be rooting for this couple to be each other's happy ever after in the end 
and that's where we ended up as always and in following on from Dark Wolf Adrift this was absolutely what I needed to just set me back on an even keel and remind me that there are brilliant books out there brilliant authors out there and that I know of some of them so really glad to have picked that one up and kept going with that one my next finish of the month is a carryover and this one carried over from last year um last year i was watching jd ray reads jade over at jd ray reads and i was a patron of hers for a while um and she was doing a read along with her patrons of one of her favorite series and i decided to give it a go because it was fantasy and because it has magic and it has swords and sorcery and it's all the things that i really like in fantasy so i kind of thought yes this is gonna this is gonna get on you know i'm gonna do really well with this one i'm gonna love it and i started book one and then it took me until april this year to finish book one that book is the ruin of kings it's book one in the a chorus of dragon series um this is a for me this is a typical hard going fantasy that i I know I'm enjoying, but for some reason I just can't get through it. Um, and this is one of those books. It took me a long time. Now, I was almost halfway through when I started April. Um, so I didn't have that much to go. And I have to admit that at the point that I picked it up in April, it was then pretty easy to carry on with it. And I really quite enjoyed finishing it off. Um, and yeah, so much so um that i have to continue the series so i will be continuing the series so you will see them come up in later uh wrap ups um and yeah uh like i say it's all about um a young man called kirin who um it's questionable whether he's the hero of the story or not i from the premise and i am reading book two at the point that i'm filming this so i'm a little bit more kind of into it um but the premise is that there is a prophecy um there are four people that could be part of the prophecy um kirin is one of them but also there is the option that they could be twisted for good or evil and i think that that's what this book was trying to play with for kirin's character is how you know if you get caught by the right person or um get caught by the wrong person it could change the way your life goes and yeah I'm really intrigued by the whole series now um like I say I am reading book two right now so thoroughly enjoying that as well um and you're definitely gonna see and I I can imagine I reading book two I'm fairly certain this is not a series that I'm going to DNF this is a five book series that you're probably going to see all five books on my shelves in future. The next book that I finished was one book that I'm reading towards uh, the signing that I'm going to that I've talked about in previous videos um, in the month of July. And that is Maverick by Nicola Jane. This is book one in a Motorcycle Gang Romance. MC Romances, I do and I don't enjoy. Um, this was one of those ones that was moving along quite nicely and then a character came in towards the end and just took that extra star away. Um, it's about Maverick and Riley. It is set in London. So it's an MC romance set in the UK. Um, as far as I'm aware, MCs in the UK are not as big um, or as prominent or as known about as MCs in America. Um, so that took a little bit of believability away for me. However, still in there, still enjoyed it. Um, there was still all the usual things that you associate with, um, you know, if you've watched Sons of Anarchy or if you've read any other MC romances. So there's the crime and there's the fights and there's the possessiveness and there's the jealousness. 
Uh, one thing I did like about Maverick, which is something I don't feel I've seen before, is that he seemed to be far more respectful of uh, Riley's independence and needs than maybe other MC alphas have been that I've read in the past. Usually, if uh, the female main character is in some sort of peril, they're not allowed to leave the compound. Um, and at one point, I thought we were going to have that conversation. But actually, what it turned into is, no, I don't want to confine you to the compound. I just want to know that I've done everything I can to make you safe when you leave. Which, again, is even more refreshing because it wasn't... It wasn't about trying to control her. It was about trying to control her safety. Um, and I really appreciated that. I'm actually really considering carrying on with this series, uh, definitely at some point. It is going to be added to my series in progress list for certain. Um, because I quite liked the way the main male character was written in this. Like I say, it was just an additional character that came in at the end. That I to create some extra tension that I don't think was needed um, and that was what uh, took it down but really enjoyed it and Nicola Jane is definitely an author who I want to go and talk to at FBBF um, later this year. My next finish was my audiobook completion for the month and that is One Day by David Mitchell. This is a romance novel, contemporary romance novel, literary romance novel, um, and it follows the lives of two people who meet at university. And we follow them over the course of 20 years. We see a snapshot out of each year on the same day of every year. So they met on the 15th of July. Um, and so we see what's happening to them on the 15th of July every year after that and the various relationships that they go through, friendships, their their own um, friendship and relationship. And if you know, you know, there's a point in this book that I ended up sat in my car because I was listening to it on my way to and from work. And I got to this certain point and I just had to stop because I knew that if I carried on this was not a book that I could carry on listening to on my way to and from work. So I paused and I'm glad I did because it meant that I could take a break away from it, a break away from the emotions and I could process the final couple of hours of the book in a much more calm manner. Um, and I could take it in more and I could appreciate um, because it does, like I say, it does follow over 20 years um and it deals with loss it deals with love it deals with happiness it deals with sadness there is addiction there is you know recovery from that there are lots of topics that are touched on but you don't feel like because of the way they're being touched on you don't feel like you are they're being glossed over in a way um because how much can you tackle in one day out of someone's life um but yes, I'm so glad that I finally got around to this one, uh, finally got this one finished, finally got this one read. Um, and I think it is one that at some point in the future, I might actually pick it up and reread. It's one of those books that I don't know that necessarily, now I I, I feel like I got everything, you know, I, I understood the story listening to it as I was doing. Um, but I think it's also one that I want to sit with a physical copy of it in my hands and read it as well and just take it in that way as well. I mentioned Steph at Steph Loves. I am a member of her Patreon and with her Patreon uh, members, she does a readathon that is based around Formula One. I decided that the weekend that she did this, um, because I was new back into it, hadn't really taken any notice of what was going on before. I just decided that I would read F1 romances and I went back to Christy Bromberg, Cray Bromberg, because I wanted to catch up with her backlist and she is halfway through releasing a quartet of books set in the world of F1. I mean, I couldn't pass up that opportunity, could I, to catch up with the backlist, read in um, a sport that I 
really enjoy watching um, with some absolutely wonderful heroes. So I'm going to kind of talk about the two books together. The first book is Off the Grid and this follows Camilla and Riggs. Uh, his first name is Spencer, his last name is Riggs. Um, and the second book is On the Edge and this follows Cruz and Maddox. Um, both of these stories just drew you in. Um, so with Off the Grid, this is fake... Um, was it fake dating? No, it wasn't. It was um, secret dating, hidden romance. And you had all the suspense and you had, you know, them trying to hide their relationship and you had all the tense from that. Um, and Camilla has a bit of a background. She has been out of the world of F1 for a while. So she's back in it and trying to prove herself because her father wants her to take over running their family team um, and she has some history within the sport now trigger warning with this one for sexual assault um, it doesn't happen on the page but uh, Camilla's character does tell Riggs so it is told to you um, so trigger warning for that uh, if that's something that you need to be aware of um, and one thing that, and this is just one of those things about Christie's writing that I absolutely adore, Spencer's reaction was beautiful. I don't know what other word to use. He was, it, it was told, so his reaction, he's, you're, you're getting his reaction and how he's outwardly reacting to Camilla, but you're also knowing hearing what's going on in the back of his mind you know that what he's trying not to react to with Camilla around because he doesn't want to traumatize her any further by having the reaction that he's having um and just I it just for me that was well done and um Christy just wrote that section so well I mean, of course, we do get Spencer's fallout from that. Um, but again, it happens in such a way that, you know, yes, there was a little bit of a cliche because, you know, Briggs has got into trouble with the team bosses and he's about to be kicked off of the team. And then because, you know, because of the reveal of what happened to Camilla, that, you know, the team boss decides not to kick him off. And I'm sorry, that's a spoiler. Um yeah so it just it was so well done you know and I just really I really enjoyed their their story and then on the edge um Cruz and Maddox uh this is fake dating and it's brilliantly done again uh Cruz is told that he has to calm himself down and one of the ways they're going to calm himself down calm him down is to make him have a girlfriend because one of the things that keeps getting him into trouble is the way he goes through women only he decides that he doesn't want to go with what they're telling him because of circumstances and he chooses Maddox completely out of the blue so then she has to then pretend to be his girlfriend and travel around the world with him as he's going to races and pretend to be the loving girlfriend and and all the while behind the scenes, the pair of them are trying not to show each other that they've fallen in love with each other. And and Cruz knows how to grovel. I just adored their their third act breakup. I mean, it was absolutely 100% predictable. And in the moment, I could have slapped Cruz in the face. I really could have. Um, and I could have slapped Maddox as well because she was just being just as stubborn. Although I think she did take the right course of action. I think Christy did write the correct course of action. Um, and yeah. And it's not one where we kept hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. Um, you, there is, It is a happy ever after. So you know that there's going to be a coming back together in the end. And I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I... I will never not enjoy Christie's writing. I can't think of a single book of hers that I have not enjoyed um, because she just writes them all so well. And I'm looking forward to the final two books coming out in June and August this year. 
I definitely am going to stay up to date with her writing on these um, and I shall, should imagine that I'm going to be catching up with her writing a lot in the coming months as well. And following that, I moved on to one of my most anticipated reads of the year. My library finally came through and I finally got my hands on Gold by Raven Kennedy. I have been waiting for this book since December. Um, I have been waiting on hold in my library since December. The person who had this before me, she they must have had to pay a small fortune in fines um, because I've been keeping watch on this and even when it's on hold and you're not the first person in the queue for it, you see that it goes into transit and then you see that it's on loan again. I didn't see that with this book once. Um, I mean, I may have missed it, but I'm fairly certain I didn't. I have been waiting since December to read this book and boy was it worth the wait. I thoroughly enjoyed being back in this world and with where it's going. This has been a real slow progression of the overall plot. Now we do have Oren's story that is playing out and she's learning more and more about herself and her history and that's what this book is going to, that's what this book does is we do more of that. Um, but there is the overarching storyline of the Fae and the humans. And actually in this book, I wasn't quite so bothered by Oren's story quite so much. Um, and I actually got quite involved with Queen Melina, who if you've read the first book, you know that she was the, is the wife of King Midas and was very, very jealous of Oren um, because Oren was the favoured saddle. Um, and... I really got involved with her story in this because she has an arc, a story arc, and I can't say anything because it will spoil it for you. Um, but her story arc is really taking off in this book um, and through this book. And I'm so ready to read Goldfinch, which is supposedly the final book in the series. This was supposed to be the final book in the series. It didn't happen that way. Um, we have book six to come and I believe that's coming out later this year not quite sure when but again I'm gonna have to wait for blooming ages to get my hands on it because I'm not buying the hardback copies they're beautiful copies I wish that I had got my hands on the hardback copies of the first few books when they came out but sadly I have the paperback copies which are just as gorgeous as these um, but I'm looking forward to completing the series Hopefully it won't take quite so long for me to get a hold of a library copy this time. Um, yeah, so I do thoroughly enjoy this. I know a lot of people say they read Guild, they weren't too sure. There is a reveal at the end of Guild, which is the jumping off point for the rest of the series. The rest of the series is different. It's the same as Guild, but different. And I, the writing is getting better. So definitely, if you like the idea of it, give the rest of the series a go. Uh, I think I say that every time I talk about these books in some fashion. But yeah, I, I absolutely love these stories. And I looking forward to reading more from Raven Kennedy in the future um especially as I want to finish her Cupid series but I now have to wait and see if I can get hold of them out of my library um because they've been taken out of KU so and I'm not quite ready to invest in physical copies of those just yet financially as well as you know not a lot of space left on the shelves but hey gold by Raven Kennedy the penultimate finish of the month was Desolate by Autumn Grey. This I picked up because it, reading the synopsis, it gave me vibes of A Priest by Sierra Simone, which was a five star book for me. Um, so of course, when I read the synopsis for this one, that it was about a man who is a member of the clergy, who is fighting how he feels about a woman in his parish. I was like, yeah, I've, I've got, I enjoyed that. I've got to read me some more of that. This was just okay. I mean, this wasn't actually about a man of the cloth fighting an attraction for a woman in his parish, in his congregation. This was about two teenagers, 18-year-olds, um, um, 
and um, Solomon is um, going to uh, join the priesthood and become a Catholic priest. He's had this aim since he was 10 years old. He'd made a promise to a fellow child um, that he was going to join the priesthood and that he was going to fight um, the bad against the bad stuff that Catholic priests are unfortunately tarred with. Um, and then he meets Grace. Um, another 10 year old who he falls in love with um, as a teenager and she knows that Solomon is going to go off to the seminary um, but they dance around each other and they start to have this kind of romance-ish thing going on between them and I just got frustrated. The bones of a good story is there but it's not about, it's about teenagers. And this was actually a kind of late YA, new adult um, age range for me. I don't think that for me it worked. Um, and it ended on a cliffhanger. Um, and I wasn't that enamored by that either. Um, I may go and talk to the author at uh, FBBF. Um, because it was another author from there uh, just to see you know what she has to say about any other books she's written um, and we'll have to go from there I suppose but I'm definitely not going to continue the series this was a definite series DNF for me um, and I'm, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to pick up any more of it to be honest um, and yeah I think I'm going to need some very solid recommendations if I'm ever going to pick her up again in the future. My final finish of the month is one that I had to get read um, before the end of May because the sequel comes out in June and I needed to know whether I should be cancelling my pre-order of the sequel or not because I pre-ordered the sequel to make sure that I had the same version of it as I do in the first book. Um, and that book is Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas. I have the Waterstones signed edition of Threadneedle um, and I have ordered the Waterstones uh, version of Shadow Stitch, which is book two. And good news, I don't have to cancel my pre-order. I definitely want to carry on and read Shadow Stitch. Um, Threadneedle, at first, I was a little bit unsure about where it was going. It is about a young woman, Anna, who is going to become a binder. She is going to have her magic bound at the age of 16. Um, and then she has to relearn how to use it after that. Um, but she hasn't been able to do magic anyway. Um, and then a beloved, she's being brought up by her aunt, um, who was her mum's twin sister. Her mum's best friend comes back into the picture with her daughter, Safi, and Safi's boyfriend, um, whose name I have forgotten, um, Attis. That's it. Effie and Attis come into her life and they start showing her the world of magic that she didn't know existed. And Anna is learning a lot and she's also making friends. Now, Carrie Thomas says that this is not a YA book. I beg to differ. This is a YA book in an adult setting with adult themes. This is very much, you know, YA tends to go from the age of 13 up to the age of kind of 17, 18. I would say this is very much a book that 17, 18 year olds can very definitely read um, without causing them any issues. It's it's one of those crossover books, I think, that your late teen could read, mid to late teen could read without feeling any trauma. It explores the themes of love and how that can be destructive and how it can be constructive. Um, and the end of the book, the there are reveals at the end of this book uh, that just had me holding my breath feeling like I'm on the edge of a knife and I am definitely ready to pick up Shadow Stitch when it comes out in June um, because I want to know where the story for Anna, Effie and Attis will go from here. Um, and there's 
a wider arching story as well um other than just the three of them um there is an overarching story and i'm really looking forward to seeing where that goes and i'm just i'm really glad um i'm sad that i didn't pick this up and read it when i immediately bought it i bought it back in 2021 um and I'm really sad that I didn't read it then, but also I'm really glad that I didn't read it then. Otherwise, I would have had a three-year wait uh, for Shadow Stitch. And I'm not sure I would have been that patient at waiting, and I might have forgotten all about it. Um, I do need to get hold of a copy of Hedgewitch, and unfortunately, I'm not sure I'm going to get hold of a, a hardback copy. Um, I'm going to have to have a go and see what I can find on resale sites, eBay, the like. Um, but yeah thoroughly enjoyed this and definitely looking forward to more and again it's another author who's writing that I'm looking forward to seeing grow and expand as she gets more experience um, and more releases under her belt so those were all my finishes of the month um this is a 45 minute video at the moment I've got to try and cut this down um <clears throat> what did you read in April? What were your standout favourites? What were your best books of the month? Let me know in the chat box, in the comments box. Um, I do like hearing from you, especially if you're new. Come and say hello, please. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a like. And if you're not subscribed and watching this, please subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more of me in your feed, because I will always look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.